Now, I have to preface this review by saying I've never read the original novel, nor have I watched the original live-action adaptation made a real long while back. All I know of the world of it is what I saw in the remake or part one to this film. To keep things relatively short, it's been a bit since I've seen that movie, but from what I can remember, I thought it was pretty decent. Lots of fun dialogue, interesting lore, and plenty of scary scenes and disturbing imagery, albeit with plenty of camp and cheese. But the best part of it was the humanity that surrounded the struggle of the main characters. It wasn't just gross and scary, but also emotionally driven and filled with plenty of feels. It was a character-focused movie. It was more than just a horror film, and I think that's what made it work as well as it did. So basically, IT Chapter 2 retains all of those key aspects from Part 1, except they're all greatly magnified. And I mean everything, the gore, the gruesome murders, the feels, the character arcs, and most certainly the cheesy horror scenes. I'll get into all of it in this review, but first I have to address the more superficial elements. I'll structure this review by addressing the plot and pacing, then characters, then tone and dialogue, and then finally the horror stuff. Without a doubt, the first thing that needs to be addressed is the almost absurd 3 hour runtime. The biggest question I've seen passed around among my friends who went and saw this thing with me was, did this movie really need to be 3 hours long? Now, there are a few ways to look at this. When discussing entertainment value alone, it's a pretty good deal. Pragmatically speaking, it's like 7 bucks for 3 hours of entertainment. Okay, no, but really. Somehow, even with this movie being as long as it is, I never really found myself to be bored while watching it. The plot is structured in such a way that it jumps back and forth between the past and present, all the while between horror and sentimental scenes, and between the different main characters so that even though the length of this story is absurd, it keeps up its momentum and remains entertaining. I don't know if I'll be able to say that upon a rewatch, however, because now that I know the story, sitting through it all over again might be impossible. That's not to say I believe every arc to be absolutely essential, however. The whole psycho breaking out of prison and going around killing dudes was totally irrelevant. That and a whole lot of other stuff could have been easily cut. I guess what I'm saying is that it's not the worst thing that it was included. I should say that the formula I just mentioned, while being beneficial for structuring such a long story in a cohesive manner, has the unfortunate drawback of creating a rather predictable one. Yeah, it was pretty much around the point where the Losers Club learns the backstory of Pennywise and how to defeat it, that I knew what the movie was going to be doing for the next hour and a half. Which made a large part of it just feel like we were just marking off a checklist of things the movie needed to do in order to finish. I don't know. It was a little too repetitive after a while because of this structure. But it's serviceable enough and does prevent the story from devolving into an incoherent mess, which it very well could have. The characters themselves were super great. The casting choices for the adults were uncanny in how similar they resembled their younger counterparts and the actors were all incredibly talented. Seriously, usually horror movies struggle hard with getting decent actors, let alone kid actors, so getting all of these talented people together and then having them resemble each other is fairly impressive. I think the adult version of the characters retained a lot of what made the kids great. Though, it was a little weird seeing them argue with each other in the same way they would when they were kids. Like, it's just kind of awkward to see adults fighting like kids, I don't know. The standout characters to me would be Bill, Eddie, and Richie. I loved all the arcs they went through and found that their stories had the most emotional weight. The best scene of the entire movie was, without a doubt, the one where adult Bill is transported back into the past to witness an encounter between a younger him and an imitation of his brother Georgie. That scene, that hurted. I think the overall theme between the characters of letting go and growing up is pretty effective and Bill's journey in getting over the fact that he wasn't responsible for his brother's death is so powerful. Though this movie is tonally strange, like it's both funny but also depressing and scary and grim all at the same time, usually I find this kind of thing to be absolutely damning as it destroys any possibility of the audience getting immersed in the story as jokes would normally pull them out of it. But for some reason, the jokes felt natural to the characters. I don't know, it was kind of hard to explain. It's just that when, let's say, Eddie got stabbed in the face by the psychotic killer, you'd expect that to be a totally 100% serious and gritty scene. But no, instead Eddie reacts rather comedically, and it was genuinely funny. But somehow, maybe it's just that the acting and the writing is pretty good, the scene felt natural. 
Eddie's goofy response to getting stabbed wasn't outlandish, it was just natural shock from being stabbed out of the blue. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the humor felt like it was consistent with the narrative, though there are certainly instances where this is not the case. There's a moment in the finale where there's a random reference to another popular horror movie that felt so forced. You'll know it when you see it. That was awful. Dialogue-wise, this movie teetered between decent and god-awful. At the beginning of the film, for whatever reason, the dialogue is insufferably bad, but it picks up after a bit for some reason. I don't know why. Now it's time to discuss the horror elements themselves. The number one question on everybody's mind is, is this a scary movie? And the answer is, kind of. It's a bit of an awkward situation. On one hand, it absolutely is, without question. This is a movie where we see kids' faces get eaten off. Yes, it's very scary and shocking. However, this movie suffers from the same problems part 1 did. The special effects are either amazing and wonderful, or they suck and the monsters look incredibly bad and fake. A whole bunch of the creatures are entirely CGI and laughably cartoony as a result. Like the old lady monster in particular, it looks so bad. Which is unfortunate because everything else about this movie is visually stunning. The set pieces are incredible and clearly real. Okay guys, the importance of real set pieces can't be understated. It makes everything look so much better and grounded. So I appreciate that. Also, some of the monsters were very clearly puppet work, like the head crab monster near the end. Like, that looked incredible. Hats off to the visual effects people on that one. But looking past cosmetics for a moment, the actual horror of this movie is done fairly well. There's tons of good buildup for the scary moments, and when they happen, it's always satisfyingly good. I especially love how the movie would set up a scary moment by simply waiting for the thing to happen. For example, at Pennywise is gonna eat this little kid, right? The girl is right in front of him and he's got his mouth open, salivating, ready to bite her. Everyone knows she's about to get chomped, but instead of just doing that, the camera stops right in the clown's face and just sits there for five seconds, motionless. Everyone knows what's about to happen, but you're forced to sit there and agonize before it does. This effect is absolutely wonderful. Another awesome moment was when the, the girl character, I, I can't remember her name, was in the apartment with the old lady that was clearly Pennywise in disguise. The girl knows that the old lady is actually the clown, and we can hear her transforming in the shadows, but we don't get to see it. Instead, the camera focuses on the dark hallway, and for like five seconds, you suddenly hear the rush of the heavy footsteps as the creature charges forward, without ever seeing it. Just a little bit of anticipation goes a really long way, folks. Though yes, of course, it's not all good stuff. A lot of the scares are really cheesy in my opinion. Like the old lady monster and the moment when Ben is talking to what he believes to be his girlfriend in school, but her head just like randomly catches on fire and she's a demon. Oh no. Yeah, like stuff like that just looked awful. But overall, the real worst part of the horror side of things was just the oversaturation of it. Like, it could have easily have lost like half of the horror scenes, and this movie would still have plenty of scares to play with. It was at a point where literally every other scene contained something scary happening, which honestly nearly broke the film for me. It would have been way scarier to simply keep the horror reserved for the most crucial moments. Its constant appearance dulls its impact a lot. And finally, I gotta talk about Pennywise. Pennywise himself is a fantastic monster. When he's out and about just clowning, he's at his very best. Convincing kids to come near him will always be the most fascinating aspect of this story for me. And the scene where he lures that poor girl to him and then won over her trust by sympathizing with her facial deformity was so good. It was gross, hard to stomach, and as cruel as it possibly could be. Everything that Pennywise is supposed to be. However, I don't really appreciate how vague and undefined his powers are. Like, I get that he's a shapeshifter and he can mess with what people see, but the limitation of on what that entails seemed non-existent. I don't really like it when monsters in fiction have no guidelines or rules because they basically become omnipotent really fast. It's the reason ghost movies always suck, because it never feels like the heroes have a chance at all against them. I think if Pennywise could simply put into people's heads a manifestation of what they feared most, that would be perfect, but the way it is now it's way too much. Also, Big Crab Legs Pennywise at the end was lame and terrible. 
Get a better design, please. I am, however, a big fan of the whole spinning lights and the cosmic entity side of Pennywise's lore. That stuff is fairly fascinating. I've always found that kind of Lovecraftian cosmic monster to be really intriguing. I don't know, something about how it's this entity that's so beyond the comprehension of mere humans that makes them so appealing to me. They're like the ultimate mystery and unknowable threat. I actually talked about this in my Stranger Things uh, 3 review. Not that you have to watch that or anything. Anyways, that's pretty much everything that needed to be said about IT Chapter 2. I probably talked this movie up quite a bit more than how I actually feel about it. I, I just tend to do that. In all honesty, it, it was a mixed bag. A lot of scary moments and a lot of cheesy moments. A lot of feels and emotional scenes and a lot of campy and poorly written ones. However, at the end of the day, it was entertaining to me for three hours. Maybe it didn't need to be that long. Okay, it, it, it most definitely didn't, but it was entertaining. It was a fun watch in theaters with my friends around either just getting hype at the scary moments or laughing at the corny ones. If you're at all interested in seeing it, I would recommend it simply for the fun experience. I wouldn't watch it alone, though. It's something you need to see with friends. Uh, though, speaking of the actual quality of the film, it's probably a 6 out of 10. Like, definitely not average, but really not great by any means. Anyways, if there was anything you want to say, I'll gladly read your comments and hear what you have to say, either about my review or the movie. Seriously, I, I love hearing people talk about what they love about movies and stuff, so if there was anything you really liked about IT Chapter 2, let me know.